Hello there, good people of the earth. Shams Nelson here from Fantastic Anatomy, and I'm very excited because I just got this in the mail. This is the Wacom Cintiq Companion 2, and I'm finally upgrading from my old Wacom tablet that I got about 10 years ago. This is the Intuos 3, and um, it's really tiny, as you can see here. Let me uh, show you this. The drawing area is this square right here. And so we're gonna see how big this guy is, but uh, it's a pretty big, pretty big leap. But I love Wacom for one reason, because this uh, tablet has lasted me 10 years and it still works. It's still great. The only little thing that uh, has happened to this whole, this, uh, this entire little setup is this, these little um, clickers things fell off and I could order a replacement repair kit or something. But I don't really use them that much. I didn't really need it, so it's just a shortcut, but the basic functions are all there. So, all right, without further ado, let's bust this guy open. So if you guys aren't familiar, the Cintiq Companion 2 is Wacom's um, like all-in-one computer. So it has a PC operating system, Windows. It comes with Windows 8.1 and um, and so it's a fully functional computer. All right, I'm just gonna go crazy on this guy. It's a fully functional computer of its own. It can also be used as a Cintiq uh, drawing screen. So you have both options. And uh, you cannot use a Mac operating system on it, but, if you, but you can plug it into a Macintosh computer to use as a, like, a, as a Cintiq. Of course, this is probably going to be super, super packaged, hopefully, okay. So it's nice and protected with some of this cushiony stuff. And I got this on, um, I got this on sale. So I got 200 bucks off and I also got this cool uh, keyboard for free. So, all right, let's just bust that one out first. I'm going to keep you guys in suspense for the actual tablet a little longer. Too excited I'm like ripping everything up all right so here it is how it looks in the little in the box and a little plastic thing oh my gosh I am a mess right now I'm way too excited all right so here's this guy he's uh oh I really like the kind of matte finish very smooth it looks like there's a slight um curvature to it so that should be nicer for your fingers rather than completely flat um we've got a little texture here i'm liking this blue the back is super shiny i'll leave the plastic on there i heard that the back collects dust because it's so shiny so on and off switch all right looks cool so uh put this up here i guess for now all right whatever all right let's get to the good stuff so, what does the box look like? Oh dang, this thing's pretty heavy, that's what I heard. Professional Creative Tablets, T Companion 2. And, uh, do, 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 do. I'm gonna be real careful, I'm gonna be a little more careful with this one now. Don't go crazy, oops, there's another one here. Okay, cool, and the box has a nice, nice finish too. Really the important parts. So I actually got the top of the line model. It's got this i7 processor and 500 something gigabytes of storage space and which isn't a big deal because you can just get external storage but uh, it's nice to have I guess. But the main reason I got the top of the line one is for the 16 gigabytes of RAM which is twice as much as uh, the next version down which is 8 gigabytes and RAM is pretty important for running program smoothly. So here's a tablet, it is really heavy actually. It's heavier than I expected even, even after hearing that it's heavy. So I'll pull it out. Here. Okay, it's, it's got double plastic on here. That's how you know it's good. All right, this seems like it's gonna be quite the unboxing process. So I'm like, actually no, this is the whole point of an unboxing video. So I guess you guys have to deal with the suspense as I do. 
All right, cool. So here's what the tablet's looking like. It's got, um, I heard that the screen is kind of like, it's not super clear, which I can tell. It's not super rough, uh, but it's got a nice little tooth to it, so it feels more like drawing on paper. Okay, great. Let's put this up here for a second and see what else comes with. This is the stand. The stand has like three different levels. I don't know how to use it yet, but apparently it's something like this, or like that, like that, you know? So you got some options on how you want it, which is better for your hand when you're drawing the correct way is to use good posture and use your shoulder like you're doing some calligraphy or something. So that's one of the big perks of a tablet like this as opposed to the Surface Pro or an iPad, which is just a tablet. I guess you could hold it, but um, there's a lot of perks and uh, that's why I decided to opt for this guy. So let's see what else it comes with. It looks like there's a, something else in here. That's pretty cool. Interesting packaging. I like packaging. I don't know why. I took this box making class, and uh, so I started to appreciate like box packaging design. Like, look how they did this. I'm not gonna waste time with that. But. All right, cool. So this is a neat slip case. It came with. It looks like there's a spot here with two little or one little button to put some stuff in. Um, Here's a saw for the pen, it seems like. And I'm wondering, is this big enough to fit the keyboard? It should be. Oh yeah, perfect. So that's perfectly designed to slip the keyboard in. Clicking it in here. Zip this guy. Pop the, the tablet in here. Great, obviously it's a perfect fit. And I'm also wondering, this should also fit in here comfortably. So let's pop that in there. So when you're on the go with this guy, um, oh, I won't. Oh, I should zip it up. Let's see. There's a problem. Nope. Okay, very snug. It's got a nice grip here, so it's not going to slip out of your hands too easy, and it looks very safe for traveling. Let's see if there's anything else, and if not, I'll stop the video, turn this guy on, and uh, or let's see if it turns on. How quickly it turns on? Oh, duh the pen. So this is another thing that I thought was pretty cool. It comes in this beautiful stylish carrying case. Makes me feel like some kind of business executive. Oh, wow, what is this? Oh, I'm loving this, this light, bl this blue, um, these blue accents they use on stuff and I'm liking the clicking. The clicking feels really soft but it has a click to it. Not sure what that is. These are other pen nibs that you can use. Uh, I guess it's, I'm not exactly sure what the differences are. I've never really bothered changing the pen nib on mine and it was fine. Oh, some of them are longer and stuff, I guess. So great, so I could slip that in right here. Well, the pen would probably be. I'm not sure where this would slip in. Oh, right here. I think that would be the spot. Pretty comfy. And then I'd have to bring the power cord probably. Oh no, that's probably the spot for the power cord. This could go. I'm not sure. Maybe just in here with this guy. I'm not gonna put it all the way in because I don't feel like it. But I'm sure it would fit. Alright, the last few things. What is this? Software bundle download. So I guess I get some software, though I'm gonna sign up for Photoshop. Oh, one little tip that I'll give you guys while I was researching which uh, Photoshop, because they have these subscription packages, and um, you can get a single Photoshop, or a single, uh, you can get the whole bundle. If you sign up for a year, it's like $40 a month or 50, and if you sign up per month, it's like 80 for all the creative, uh, for all the Adobe products, so you get Premiere, Illustrator, uh, Photoshop, all that stuff. But if you sign up for just one product at a time, it's 20 bucks a month or 30 if you're getting, if you're doing month to month instead of doing the full year subscription. But they have this photography package which is just 10 bucks a month and you don't have to do a whole year or anything. 
and it comes with light lighthouse and photoshop and i thought it must be a like a toned down version of photoshop but apparently it's the full photoshop and the reason that it's only 10 bucks is because they're marketing to people who are mostly going to use that light light box lighthouse light box program um and they're just using photoshop occasionally and they don't want to pay full price for photoshop so i'm going to just get that ten dollars thing and not use lighthouse or whatever that thing is lightbox and just use the Photoshop and I'm gonna save 20 bucks or 10 bucks a month at least. So yeah, that sounds like a good deal. So this, what is this that I'm gonna plug in here? Oh, this looks like an HDMI cable. So if I wanna hook this up to another screen, I've got that option. Uh, probably shouldn't have unpackaged that because I'm not gonna use that in the near future, but whatever. And then here's the power cord, obviously. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in. And I don't think you guys need to see me plug that in. So I will be back as soon as this guy is ready to turn on. All right, so I'm ready to turn this guy on, but I did find one other thing in this uh, little box that I was gonna pull out. I guess it's a little, oh well. Oh, I thought I forgot I'd have to open it up with one hand. I should have just opened it in here. Look at me, look at my dexterity. Are you impressed? Yeah. Okay. It's nice. I like how it's got a little texture to it. It's like a heavy duty cleaning rack. It's not just like a little microfiber, like it'll only get the finest dust particles out. That's nice. I'm really digging all these accessories they came with. It's really well thought out. All right, Wacom, so far so good. So let's see, we got the little, uh, where is it? this little on switch now it's cool because i think the older versions from the reviews i was looking on it's a button um so you could accidentally press it when you're moving it but this one you got to flip it so it's gonna be a lot more sturdy it's not gonna turn off so i just did that oh did i not do it enough okay here we go. all right this doesn't bode well what's going on here it's plugged in Got a little light going on. Um, what's going on? Maybe we need to hold it down for a second. All right. Well, I guess I either have to. Oh, there it is. Never mind. I guess I have to hold it down for a second. Boom. So let's see how fast this guy just starts up. Oh, there we go. Booting up. So I did a little research. It comes with Windows 8.1. You can get a free upgrade to Windows 10, but uh, according to the uh, from my research, 8.1 is a little faster. And uh, I don't think you. Well, I guess yeah. Why not? I'll show you guys the whole thing so you can see what the experience will be like. All right. So app language English, keyboard layout US, Pacific time. All right. Cool. It knows me pretty well. Let's see if the touch screen's working. Boom, it worked. Product key, all right, you guys don't wanna see me type in the product key, that's gonna be boring. Burp. Oh, but what you might wanna see me do is turn on the uh, keyboard. Let's see if it just connects right away. So we've got this on off switch. Flip it on. What's going on? There's a little light here, so something's happening. Doing some Bluetooth. Bluetooth in? Doesn't seem to be Bluetooth in. Is there a little Bluetooth button on the side or something I need to use? No. Nope. Okay, so I'm gonna use the on screen keyboard then. Alright, I guess I gotta set it up or at least. Yeah. Alright, so uh, be right back then. Alright, so we just punched in the product key. The on-screen keyboard was a pleasure to use. I'm loving the um, personalized pick a color you like and give your PC a name. Be able to personalize it more later. So I like green. Oh, no, 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 no. Not for this screen. I want it to be really relaxing. Alright, let's see what a black one looks like. Oh, black's pretty nice. I think I might just keep it black. Keep it professional. Woo! All right. Wow. So, what do you guys think? Black or this dark or this grayish blue? Not black, man. Let's keep it black. Grayish blue, a little too corporate. All right. 
Shams. Let's do the Shams Companion 2. Sounds cool. Oh, I should have kept it on the keyboard for that. But anyways, you can see it's pretty neat. Nice. Oops. All right, Shams Companion 2. Whatever, I can customize it later. PC name too long, contains invalid characters. Shams Cintiq. I think that's how you spell it. Let's try that. All right. Got to select my uh, thing. All right, you guys better not steal my internet. Or exciting, excited or no excited road. One. That's just the default internet name that my uh, that our internet came with. Excited road one. It's really wild. Uh, I guess it's not that wild. It's just weird, man. I don't know. All right. Express settings. We recommend these settings. Blah blah blah. You can customize them later. I'll just use the express settings. I trust you, Microsoft probably against my better judgment. Checking your internet connection. We don't have the fastest internet here, but it should be reasonable. All right, next you'll set up your account. Well, in the meantime, oh man, all right, all these steps. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then I'll be back. All right, so what happened is I actually ended up going through the settings, the the ones that said uh, trust their express settings or whatever, and I looked at all of them and I actually liked the way they set it up, it seemed reasonable. Um, the other thing that I did was try to log, create a new Microsoft account, and apparently my email is already associated with a Microsoft account, but my password didn't work. So say if you forgot your password, continue without an account. So I clicked that little thing, it was very subtle, right next to the thing once you type in the wrong password. It wasn't an option before, which I think is kind of sneaky of them. They're really trying to get you to sign up with their online account. Um, so uh, so then it just told me to create a local. Wow, that's a vivid green. Ooh, colorful. All right, so it told me to, uh, and I also heard that the colors on this aren't super vivid and it's a little bit like matted. Maybe in the sun you can't see it as well, even though it's supposed to have glare protection, but these colors look very vivid to me. Um, so I'm pretty happy about that. So, um, so as I was saying, I just created a local account, so it's not connected to the internet. It's not gonna, I don't have, I don't, I, no, I do have another PC computer. That must be what the account is for. But anyways, the point being is that I don't need it to be loading all these settings and browser stuff. I wanted this to be a clean slate anyways. So, um, so that's cool by me, it worked out well. So that's a little tip if you're signing this up and you don't want it to, have, have all your browser settings or whatever other settings it's going to load from other PCs you have. Just type in the wrong password and then say you forgot your password and it'll just let you create a local thing that's just on this computer. It doesn't connect to it. All right, taking care of a few things. It's great. I thought I'd show you this real quick. Um, the stand. Oh man, I don't think I can do it with my hand, but basically it was really easy to put on. Uh, maybe I'll show you guys that later, but it's got those three levels and it just these two little nibs one at the bottom one at the top and you just slide it in and it seems really really pretty stable i'm surprised I mean, maybe there's a little magnet in there or something all right um i'll give it a couple more seconds to see how so you guys can get an idea of how long it takes and how beautiful the loading screen is because this is pretty fanciful in the meantime what can i do what can i do oh i tried to um to type using this and I found that using my fingers is so much more intuitive and user friendly. And also it's like a regular keyboard. So when I copied and pasted, I just do command copy, you know, command paste or control on the, on PC. So that was very easy to use. So you can press two buttons at the same time kind of thing. It's just like using a regular keyboard. It's not like the Apple keyboard where first I was clicking it and like holding down, waiting for the copy to pop up. And I'm like, what happened? I'm like, oh, I can just, I can just do it like a regular uh, PC which is nice and the keyboard it's kind of like almost full size so you can see my hand here and it takes up the whole thing so you could put two hands side by side click 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 I'm sure I'm gonna get oh the only thing that it, it made the keys the whole thing and you have to click a little button to get to the numeric thing on the side so that's the only little uh, thing that's more tablet like instead of uh, like here 
it has the numbers up top. It didn't have the numbers up top. So, uh, so yeah. All right, this is taking a little while, so I'll turn this off and uh, come back when it's all set up. All right, it's saying almost ready, so I thought I'd come back. And I was thinking about this, and this tablet for drawing compared to like the Surface Pro and the iPad, which are the two other options I considered, and they are significantly less expensive, but I really feel like the best analogy is that the Cintiq Companion 2 is the Spartan, to the the Persians of the of the uh, of the Surface Pro and the iPad, and what I mean by that is like the Persian army, they're they're legit. If you've seen 300, like they're a good army. The Immortals, they're hardcore, good stuff, you know. But you can't mess with those Spartans, and everything on this has like grit. Like this is heavy. This is a beast. If you drop this on your toe, your toe is gonna suffer. Not the pad. And then uh, this has got nice, look at that nice texture. It's a rough texture. It's not like, oh, baby, soft, smooth. Oh, look at me, I'm an iPad. No, it's like, I'm ready for this. I'm ready for business. This, uh, the first clue, or not the first, but one of the big things was that this uh, what, uh, cleaning pad, it's got tooth. It's like, oh, it's got, look at that. You can see those little, it's, it's tough, man. This thing's ready to go. It comes in a case. Like, they're not messing around. This thing's heavy, too. This case is heavy. Everything is pretty heavy, man. So, I like that, personally. I know how rugged from this guy right here. I know how rugged Wacom pro products can be. And, um... So, yeah, that's legit. So, the only thing that I'm annoyed about is them lying about being almost ready. I don't know what their definition of almost is. But it clearly differs from mine. Anyways, I'm having a really psychedelic time watching these colors change, so I guess I'm not too too upset. So I'm gonna turn this off and I'll be back when it's really ready. Microsoft recommends upgrading Windows 10. I bet you do, Microsoft. But I'm going to click this little tiny gray button in the corner that says, do it later. Uh, we'll download it in the background so you can install it no, I don't want you to. Decline free upgrade. Not recommended. I want you to use your... I'll do it myself. Thank you very much, Microsoft. Woo! Oh, man, I think it's working. Oh, yeah, but what I really turned this on to show you is that well, don't throw away any of your packaging before checking it extremely carefully. This is ridiculous, actually. Well, I don't know why this is all stuck here. That's kind of ridiculous, too. But I noticed these cables. Like, what is this? What is this over here on the edge of this? What is this box? Oh, the key, the keyboard. And then, and then I was just, oh, 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 what's this? It's another cable. Oops, I'm holding this all crazy. So yeah, I didn't even, I can't even figure out how to open it up. I think I have to tear the box apart. So just check all your, this thing comes with a lot of little goodies. So just make sure to check all your packaging if you're getting one of these before you throw anything away. All right, so I don't really know how to use this, so I'm gonna click start. Okay, it's not, I've never used Windows 8.1 or whatever, it's got the Wacom desktop. All right, so uh, how do I just get to the regular desktop? Oh, right here. Boom, beauty. Cool, so the first thing I'm going to do, let's pop open Internet Explorer. Um, let's check out what they recommend to do. So on here it says, Wacom.com slash Cinti Companion 2 slash welcome. Okay, oh my gosh. And the second thing I'm gonna have to do is definitely, uh, definitely get rid of this Internet Explorer business and get some Chrome up in here. Okay, so I click down here, the keyboard pops up. So we're gonna go and this will give you an idea how the keyboard looks. Sin Oops, companion. And then here's that little button to click the button again. So that was pretty quick. Slash. And welcome. And let's see how they're going to welcome me. Oh, so why is it? It's going to, I guess I double click to hide the keyboard. Drivers, hardware drivers, a small computer, blah blah blah. So, um, 
So it doesn't come with the drivers pre-installed. Oh, just so it forwarded me to product support drivers. I don't think I should need to do this. I guess that's if you upgrade to the Windows 10, 7, 8, and 10 use the same drivers. Yeah. All right, so that was kind of useless. All right, um, cool. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to go sign up for my Adobe account. I'm not gonna include that on the video and install Photoshop. And I guess I'll come back once Photoshop is set up. Oh, and I think I need to calibrate the 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 uh, the pen and stuff. So I might do that and change a couple settings. So if I do that, I'll be right back. So I'm trying to get the keyboard set up. Um, before both, there's a little blue flashing light where the Bluetooth is. Um, but that's off. Anyways, what I did is I plugged it in with that secret cable I just showed you, and it seems to be charging. And then it said go to the charms, click the start button, which is this, I found out. This guy right here. Let me turn on the lights so you can see. Okay, so that little uh, button in the middle is apparently the uh, start screen. And then I was like, okay, what is this to open the charms bar? Apparently this is the charms bar. I guess it seems kind of charming. I don't know. But, and then I says to click settings, but I was up here searching like charms because I didn't know what that meant. So in case that might help you out, I think that's settings because it looks like it. PC settings it says, uh, add the, turn Bluetooth on if it's off. Um, so I'm going to go to wireless, I guess network. All right, this isn't the easiest thing to figure out, which is typical of PCs, I think, from my experience. So, um, you don't see anything that says wireless, so I guess I'm going to turn this off and find that. But basically, once you find, well, I'll show you guys, so in case you're doing this, then it'll make your life a little easier once I figure it out. So this little booklet gave me terrible instructions. Just up here, you just go to PC and devices, and there's Bluetooth right there, even though there is a thing that says devices and all that stuff. Oh my gosh. Bluetooth, it's on. Okay. Laptop, ready to pair. Unknown, ready to pair. What is this? TV, ready to pair. I don't think I want any of these things. I'm looking for my thing. So I'm going to click this little button on the bottom. See, there's this. Uh, am I holding this upside down now? Gosh. That little button right there my little fingers can reach there okay so now you see the blue got a blue blinker and popped up right here Wacom Bluetooth keyboard ready to pair click that let's pair it up boom 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 all right so I'm just gonna type that in and I'm gonna assume it works and if you don't see me talk about this again for a second then that means it works and if it didn't work I'll be back to complain plugged in still now I wanted to show you because I'm gonna sign up for this Adobe Photoshop thing so what I just search is uh, Photoshop CC and then I click the ad that they have at the top on Google now I'm gonna go choose plan down here it says you can uh, you get Photoshop as part of Creative Cloud as a single app starting in 1999 but that's just how they trick you because they know I want Photoshop but if I had searched like Adobe Lightbox or Adobe uh, photography or something then I could do this option which is $9.99 a month and it comes look Lightroom CC and Photoshop CC here we got annual plan so even if I if I change this to a monthly plan look it's 30 bucks a month all I get is Photoshop and uh, I get 20 gigabytes of cloud storage big whoop I got hundreds of gigabytes up on this computer I don't need your cloud thank you very much mr. Adobe so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna be awesome and trick them and I'm gonna use this 9.99 one to get the same thing get all these centrals and I'm even get an extra app so I'm gonna get Photoshop and Lightroom and this one I would get the exact same version of Photoshop for just 20 bucks more it's ridiculous so uh, and I even get my own portfolio website whatever that means so all right cool I'm gonna go ahead and buy that now all the way the other option is uh, to get all their stuff for 50 bucks but you have to sign up for a year and then it's like 80 bucks if you sign up month per month so if you're using their other stuff like illustrator and premiere and whatever could be a good option for me i'm just all 90 percent of my stuff is on photoshop so or even 99 i don't know i rarely use anything else so i'm cool with that oh man 
So I signed up for the Adobe, um, what is this called? The Creative Cloud Photography Plan for 10 bucks a month. And uh, it comes with Adobe, uh, with the Photoshop and everything. Had some trouble installing it, but the Adobe Photoshop tech support was really good, really fast. They took over my computer and did all this stuff. And I don't understand why there was a problem to begin with, because it's a brand new computer. But whatever this is working um but i won't go into photoshop because that's a whole nother video the other thing i was going to say is that i'm going over here this uh, wacom desktop center and i'm doing a driver update so if you need to open it up it seems like it's right there uh, uh on the thing and after that i'm going to do uh, like an orientation and touch settings and stuff and set up all the pen and button settings blah 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 but so just so you know, it doesn't come with the most updated driver, so you're gonna wanna do that. So when I busted out this pen, it uh, asked me if I wanted to calibrate, and I said, yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna have to click each target. And one guy said to hold it up, um, what's it called? To hold it straight up like this, but I, like this. And just click straight up 90 degrees but I heard that you're just supposed to do it however is most natural to you because that's what you want it calibrated to and it also said to recalibrate it if you change your uh, working position or anything significantly so move the pen around the screen I mean yeah that seems reasonable I guess okay cool all right, cool. So I've had this baby for about a week now, and I'm pretty darned happy with it. Um, I got play, uh, I got PlayStation, I got Photoshop installed and everything, but it was not a smooth process. And I will say that most of my complaints about this are due to the operating system and uh, not to the device itself. The operating system I mean by that is Windows. And so actually, I'm actually going to show you how uh, quick it shuts down and stuff um and turns on so here's just shutting it down boom it's off very nice okay and then let's turn it back on there's this uh little switch you have to pull it down and you actually have to hold it down for a moment to get it to it doesn't want to focus there it seems maybe you have to hold it down for a minute oh look it's already on man it was quick whatever you missed it but believe me it was quick and all right let me put in my password Boom, welcome, done, back on, love that. And I know that uh, from what I looked at the speed tests and stuff and from talking to my dad who has a pretty uh, high quality Dell laptop, uh, over $2,000 that his company gave him. Um, and he says Windows 10 takes forever to start up and stuff. So here, let's open up uh, Photoshop down here. See how fast that starts up. See, it's doing its fast stuff. Boom, pretty good. Oh, that's interesting. Usually it starts off on a different screen that allows me to ask me if I want a new document and stuff. But uh, anyways, so yeah, like I was saying, I had some trouble actually installing Photoshop. Um, it stopped working in the downloads. And um, so look, this on this setting is what I usually use to have used so far. So width and height seven inches, resolution 300. Let's test it out on something much bigger. Let's go like 25 inches with a resolution of 300 pixels per inch and see what happens because I actually haven't tested out its capabilities on bigger sizes. So it just created the document pretty darn fast. Um, so like I was saying, I had trouble installing Photoshop. It paused at 42% and uh, it wouldn't work. Um, so what I ended up doing is talking to... So here we're using the basic brush. Let's start off with that. I mean, that's no lag. I don't feel any lag on that. Um, let's try a more complex brush. And um, so it didn't work. And what happened is um, I got the Photoshop guys. I want to make it bigger. I got the Photoshop technician guys to help me out. Okay, so here we're seeing some lag. But this is a pretty complex brush. It wasn't too bad. Um... Sorry, I just wanted to, wanted to make it a little smaller. Okay, so looking at this brush that has a lot of detail in it, there is some lag, but I think that's to be expected. I mean, there's a lot of lag there. 
Let's try another brush that's not quite as detailed, so some like oil one. Okay, I'm also getting some lag on that. So the basic brush, no lag. These other, these are from the Kyle, uh, this Kyle's Mega Brush Pack. And um, I really like, you get like, you get tons of brushes here, I'll show you. Uh, so that, it was only, it only cost like, not very much. I got all these brushes. Like less than twenty dollars or something like that, and you get a bunch of brushes, and a lot of professionals use it. So if you're looking for just like, hey, I just want to spend less than twenty bucks, get all the brush packs I need, and not have to worry about, okay, do I have the best brushes? Then just get this, and you know the pros use it, so it should be good enough. I don't haven't really experimented with hardly any of them, but um. So anyways, back to the Photoshop thing. Photoshop technical support is awesome, basically. They helped me out when I was making my purchase. They explained to me that the $9.99 Photoshop is in fact the same as the $20 ones. They didn't try to beat around the bush or be sketchy about that at all. And um, in addition, when the install didn't work, they got I got a technician like really quickly. I didn't have to like wait on hold for a long time. And he took over my screen with some Photoshop technician magic and his little mouse was moving around. Obviously I gave him permission and he just went in and I was annoyed because he was like annoyed that the computer wasn't just working really like with no problems because he was going through um I'll open up some other stuff I've done so you can see like I don't know I guess some stuff that I did um no lag or anything on that working great loving it uh so yeah he just took over my computer screen and fixed it up it took a little while he had to restart it once or twice and but it's fine whatever I mean that works and he got it working and since then it's been working fine um so yeah i mean look how fast these things open these are like mostly seven by sevens you know i'm just like going through i love how i can just touch touch screen on everything uh you know whatever fun stuff and then i'll take it just close it no i won't change that boom it's closed like it is a pretty fast computer and I think that staying on Windows 8.1 was the way to go. It keeps asking me to upgrade, and I keep saying, you know, thank you. And I think it stopped now, so that's good. Uh, I got an antivirus. I did a lot of research on that and ended up going with, um, what's it called? Uh, oh, shoot. All right, burb. Ah, uh, here it is. Okay, I went with this web root after a fair amount of research because um, it's supposed to be like kind of the lightest out of all of them and it very runs in the background and stuff very low key and so far I like it the only thing that happens is when it starts up I can see a little pop up here it says like oh you're secure but it doesn't do anything like I don't have to press anything or be like okay or like scan now I really don't like that so it runs in the background and in addition it stores the file information on the cloud so um, so it updates automatically that way, I guess. And it means that I don't have a big file on my computer. It's like 20 megabyte file for the whole thing. I don't have to ins download all their information about, oh, this is malware, this is blah, blah, blah. The other thing I'll say is that it doesn't, uh, thanks a lot Microsoft for being cheap. Like I was expecting it was gonna be like Apple and I'm gonna get like, you know, uh, some stuff like how it comes with iMovie and all that good stuff. It doesn't come with anything cool like that. It doesn't even come with Microsoft Word and uh, PowerPoint and things like that. So I got this thing called Open Office. It's basically like same thing, you know, word processor. It can open doc files. Like I got a doc file and I couldn't even open it on this. And I was like, what are you talking about? It comes with something called WordPad or some something, whatever. It's a ghetto program. It sucks. Um, and it opened up and had all this nasty you know, like crazy code on the screen, Ugh, whatever. Anyways, obviously I'm not using Internet Explorer, I like Chrome, but pretty much anything's better than Internet Explorer. Um, and the last thing I'll show you before I end this video, uh, I think is the last thing I'll show you, unless I think something else, is I'm gonna change one of the settings on these guys right here. So let's go into pen and button settings, so you can see how this works, it's pretty easy. So I can, this is for all the, the six buttons on the edge here, on the top and on the bottom. And then for this guy, I call, I call it the rocker ring, which is kind of badass, I guess. I don't know what this Photoshop colorist is, only that it like, when I click it by accident, it messes up my colors. 
So what I wanted to do was just do, I got redo on this side, so let's just change it to undo. Um, okay, so I think you can go to keystrokes, and I think you can just do control Z. And then look, it just comes up right there. The little command, so you can put like whatever you want there and then I'm just gonna go okay oh and I wanted to call it something so I'm gonna name it so in the top right corner when you click it you'll see it so stuff so I'm gonna name this undo All right All right cool close this out All right closing it out and let's open up Photoshop real quick a little bit faster goes burr, burr. I feel like it's going a little slower because you're watching. No, it's okay. That's about right. Just a uh, uh, new. Let's go back to my normal size. I think I should work at a bigger size. Eh, whatever, it's fine. I'm just doing, not doing anything for specs. I don't have any specs I'm working it for right now. Just fun and Instagram and stuff. All right, so blah, 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 like that. Okay, and then, so now I'm going to click undo. See how it pops up right there? Come on, you can do it, focus, undo, redo, see, got brush size plus, brush size minus, those are my other things, this is alt, shift, settings, I don't know, I never used that one, control, space, radial menu, I don't really use this too, maybe, I don't know if it's that good, whatever. All right, cool. So I think that's it. So basically, I would give this like a, I mean, aside from the Windows operating system, which isn't bad. I mean, it's not terrible. It's just like not quite as nice as Mac, I guess, in my opinion. And I know some people prefer Windows because you can do more. And uh, I don't know. But anyways, I'd give this like a, almost like a 10 out of 10, pretty much. Like a 9.5, man. It's pretty, pretty darn spiffy. The thing is uh, pretty heavy. I don't know if I talked about that. I think I did. Like, it's been rugged. I took it out on a hike. Um, there was a little gra glare on the screen when I was in the sunlight. I mean, there was quite a bit of glare. I don't think I could have really worked in that condition or not very comfortably. As soon as I'm in the shade, it's fine. Like, I mean, that's pretty much standard of any kind of screen, I guess. Maybe not the more shiny, like, uh, iPad screens and stuff don't have that much glare. All right, that's one downside, I suppose. Also, I noticed that... The uh, webcam on the front seems to be very low quality, um, just judging by the one photo I took. So don't expect anything uh, fancy there. But um, yeah, I don't know. Let's go. Let's just say the last things I think. It's got three USB ports. Oh, this is great. I didn't mention this. It's got a SD card reader and a micro SD card reader. I think that's what this little baby is up there. I can't imagine it's anything else. But definitely this is a regular SD card and that's really helpful because I can just pop things in and out, use it as ex extra storage, and it's super convenient. On this side, you've got the volume controls, the, the on button, and it's not like a button, so it can't automatically or accidentally get turned on and off, which is great. Uh, this is a lock, so you can have the orientation. So if you flip it sideways, it can, f like, you know, if I turn it like this, it can flip um, the screen, but I turn that off because when I'm drawing, like you know if I'm fl like a piece of paper I know you can rotate like this oh yeah should I should I do so look oh man usually this works a little better than that but basically why isn't it all right well I guess this is one of those times when it's not going to cooperate but usually I haven't had much problem with this so you can rotate it like that you can move it around with two fingers you can zoom in and out so it's pretty nice to have that quick, those kind of quick options. Um, and then, but also you can just, I can just turn the entire tablet and do that, use that to make my line. It's kind of more intuitive, like I'm working with a sketchbook or piece of paper. So that's why I turned the screen orientation off. And the volume is not bad, you know, it's not like blasting. I haven't tried playing like that much, like any music or anything. So I don't know how the bass response is, but uh, it's not really what I bought it for. So I'm not too concerned about that and yeah I'm pretty darn stoked so if you're thinking about getting one of these guys then uh, I'd say do it 
All right, that's it. Peace, God bless, and stay fantastic, everyone.